Welcome everybody to Our Green Acres. I'm so glad you came over to our channel today. And if you are new to my channel, I want to introduce myself. My name is Teresa. In today's video, I'm going to share with you a vintage butter churn and how I give it a new life. I'm going to make an easy rag wreath and show you some ways you can decorate with it. I transform a metal tray into a shabby chic vanity tray and then we're going to make some cute, primitive and rustic pieces that are patriotic for your home. So stay tuned, let's have some fun and let's get inspired. If you haven't joined my Facebook Home Decor page, I'd love for you to go over and join it. And also, go over and follow me on Pinterest and Instagram. The first project I'm going to work on is going to be a vintage butter churn. And y'all, even though we no longer use butter churns, these are great decor pieces to pick up. Either at an estate sale, a flea market thrift stores i purchased this one at a, at a yard sale and the lady only charged me i'm not sure if she charged me a dollar or two dollars these things today can run up anywhere i read between 25 to 500 dollars so i'm going to leave this one in its original state i just do not have the heart to chalk paint this and i think it's beautiful just the way it is it's very rustic and it's very primitive so in the video today i'm going to give you some ideas of how if you have one of these or if you find one of how you can decorate it put it in your home and make it a really nice home decor piece now mine did not come with the um i guess this is the the rod it come with a little paddle and i showed you that that was inside the churn but it did not have its dowel with it so i purchased one at walmart in the craft center and i think i paid about a dollar for that dowel and then we're going to stain it as close as we can get it this is the stain we had on hand i think it was called golden oak now i've got ben out i, I do not like to use stain <laughs> so when he can i get him to do these kind of um projects for me <clears throat> so we stained the dowel and now i'm just gonna when i stage it you're gonna see i made a tail of some rustic strips of some fabric and i tied them off with some twine and i made some of those some more of those fabric flower rosettes that i have in my previous video and i'll link it down below now I'm going to make a really simple little rag wreath and I've made several videos on these and I love to make them and I really love to make them when I have a little mini wreath form and I had a really sweet um, friend send me a whole box of, of things and in it was these little mini uh, wreath forms so I really appreciate those but I'm going to use I think this is a crib cover maybe or some kind of cushion cover I purchased this at a yard sale for 75 cents I love the color of it and I love the pattern so I thought this will be great for crafting so I'm going to cut this in strips and this is what I'm going to use for my rag wreath and I'm also going to throw in some coffee stained flower sack cloth and I'm just going to rip my strips and you know everybody knows how to make these rag wreaths I think by now but if you don't we're, we're going to show you you just basically tie your strips of fabric onto your your form and the reason I like working with these little mini forms is they're just the right size you can make one of these probably it probably took me um, no longer than two hours to tie these on and it's you know very easy to do very simple it's something you can do while you're sitting around watching tv um and, you know and, it, and it's a relaxing project to do so you just tie them on now some people like to be and go in a consistent pattern with their colors you know um of their fabric i just kind of randomly tie mine on i don't i don't really go with a pattern so i just you know you go all the way around your wreath form i like to tie my strips kind of long and then if i need to i can trim them afterwards now once you get your whole wreath form made and you've got you know it's all covered then we'll go in and you can always trim it up you know and we'll fluff it out but that was the front now this is the back the back looks just like the front 
well, I'm sorry, but I, I took a lot of time and I want all those little pretty tails I just had. I want them in the front because nobody's going to see the back. So I'm going to go through and it's mainly going to be in that little center section that we'll, I'm going to push all my little tails back through to the front. And that way your front's got all the fluff, you know, and it's got all those little tails in the front, not on the back. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of pushing them back through and when you do this is what the back will look like because now we've got most all those little tails to the front and then you know like I say you fluff it you form it you shape it and you trim it up and you'll see in just a minute how we're going to use it and I'll give you some ideas for it. Now I'm going to show you how we can make a really cute patriotic sign. Now, I had a very sweet viewer that sent me some things, and then the box was this. Y'all, I love this. This, I think she purchased probably at Hobby Lobby because I think it's a brand that they carry. But this is whitewashed. It's got like a grainy texture to it. I'm going to leave it as it is. I got a new stencil set, y'all, from Amazon. And, of course, all of my stencils are linked in my Amazon store, and I have a huge selection to choose from. This come in a pack of several. I, I, it was hard for me to decide which one I wanted. So make sure to go out and check them out. If you're looking for some fun, patriotic 4th of July type projects and you need some stencils, I highly recommend these and they're very affordable. So I picked this one and I'm going to do my star in blue. And then I, I mean my big star in blue. And then I'm going to do the little stars. I'm going to alternate. I'm going to do every other one white. And then I'm going to go in and do some red. Now, the red is lipstick red, and my blue, my sweet friend Nikki sent me that last year, and she purchased that at Hobby Lobby, and I'll have to um, leave in the description box what the color blue was for the paint. Now, these are those crafting, um, I think they're called quilt squares that I purchased on Amazon. These are linked in my store. You get like 50 squares of assorted colors and patterns. Y'all, I think these, when I purchased them, were like $8.99. I'm going to order another set of them. I love using these for projects, and they rip uh, really good, like if we want to make our messy bows. These work really well. So I picked out some colors I felt were patriotic and that would, you know, go good together uh, to make a messy bow. And, you know, I don't... I think we all probably know by now how to make that little crisscross messy bow. And if you don't, I've got a video on it and I'll leave it linked below too. But you just mainly, you, we're just going to cut strips of random fabrics that, you know, go well together. But you can coordinate your patterns, your colors. You know, I'm going with more of the blues and the reds. I'm going to throw in uh, some stripes. I got some polka dots. You know, just all kinds of colors and designs. This is the fastest way I found. You just cut your slits all the way across, you know, the bottom of your fabric, and then just start ripping. And like I say, this fabric rips really well. Now, once we have all of our strips ripped, and you've got everything you want um, to go on your in your bow, then we're just going to lay them out in a crisscross pattern. You just kind of want to make an X or a cross, and just alternate your colors um, and your patterns. Now, once you've got them all laid out the way you want them, then I just took several strips of twine because I want, like, that rustic look to go on my sign because it, you know, is real rustic looking with the grain of the wood. So, I want, you know, lots of twine on my bow. So, I, did, I think I used three or four strands. I'm just tying it in the middle really tight. And you just want now, just kind of fluff out your bow, kind of shape it, and then trim it up on the ends if you need to. I'm going to leave this one with the strands pretty long because I want this one to be uh, a pretty big bow because I'm going to put it in the corner um, of, my, of my sign. And then I'm just going to put it right there, and then I'm just going to attach it using some hot glue. And there we go. I think this turned out really cute. If you like this video so far, I hope you'll hit that like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'd love for you to. Okay, now I'm going to show y'all how we can make some really easy, fun, primitive flags. For this project, we're going to need a piece of drop cloth. And I did 12 and a half inches long, and I did 4 and a half inches wide. Now, you can make them as big or small as you want to. 
but that's just the size I was going with and you're going to need some wooden dowels and you can usually get these at Dollar Tree or Walmart. Now I'm going to take the drop cloth and I like mine to be tattered and frayed so I'm going to go around the edges with my fingers and my fingernails and just kind of tatter it. You can also cut it a little bit larger and you can wash it and dry it and it will also give you that tatter look around the edges if you want to do that. Now basically I want to glue the tops and the bottom and I want to leave the end open and I go and I leave it probably about an inch from the end open because that's where we're going to put our dowel and I want a little bit left over to hang off you know on the side of the dowel so that's where we're going to put, put we're going to put the little wooden dowel and you just put it in there and I'm making this flag I'm doing it on camera y'all and it is so backwards <laughs> Because I actually wanted the indention of my pole to be on the front. But you can see how I'm doing this. So don't do it this way. If you want the indention of your pole to be on the front, um, then uh, you're you need to reverse your flag. And the next one I do will be correct. So now I'm going to go with the back side. And it's not going to have that indention of my pole. But that's okay. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get the message across of how we can make an easy little cute flag. And so now I'm just going to take random pieces of lace scrap fabric I just go through my boxes of things that I save from previous projects and I just I, I just work with what I have I kind of put them down look at them and see what I like the best now I want mine to look real primitive and very rustic so you know I'm just using things you know I'm using lace I, I think there was some stained flower sack cloth like just a piece of hem I had ripped off um, that's a piece of like a piece of um, tattered lace and another piece of maybe that's drop cloth and you want to layer you know put your your um, bottom layer down and then you can go over it with even thinner strips and layer on top of those just to add a little bit more color you know design texture to it and then you're going to want to leave a space because we're going to need to put you know our stars something for our stars in there and you can use all kinds of things for that little square for your stars um you just have to get real creative. Now, I made three of these because I want to give you lots of inspiration. And um, I had a sweet viewer send me these. I love these. I've been dying to use them. So I'm going to use the, one of these little lace hearts. And for my first flag, that's going to be my, you know, my little, my little star section. Now, I just kind of went a little bit longer with my strips. I'd rather them hang over the end. And that way, all I have to do when I get finished is just go through and trim them off. So now I'm going to make the second one, and this one is correct. <laughs> this is the way I wanted my pole. And so again, we're going to glue the top, and we're going to glue um, the bottom, and then we'll leave an inch from the end open, and then we'll go in and we'll put our little wooden dowel in. The inspiration from these I got off of Instagram, and I'm going to link their Instagram account below, but I think it was called Hol Halsey Homestead. They have a lot of cute things, and I think she actually sells these on her in her Etsy shop. So if you don't want to make them or don't have time, you know, please go out and visit her because I think she's got an awesome Etsy shop. So, um, so now we got our little pole on. Now we're ready to decorate this one. Now I'm giving you, you know, options and ideas because everybody likes different colors and um, the, everybody has different color palettes. Well, this one's more of a, I don't know if this is Americana, but this one will be more of the patriotic colors. I'm going to go with my red, white, and blues. And this is some more of that um, quilt, those quilt squares that I got, you know, in my Amazon store. And I had a little bit of those left over from my messy bow. So I'm just going to use strips of those and then put some lace on it. And then I'm going to make... Um, the little star square um, spot I'm going to use some little lace um, for that and then I'm just going to hot glue uh, those on <clears throat> now you can also use um, fabric glue if you wanted to but to me I think the hot glue worked just fine Okay, on to the next project. Y'all, we're going to work on this ornate metal tray. And I've been looking for one of these. And I, so I was so excited to find this one. I think I got it at a yard sale because I'm pretty sure that's about the only places I've been at this point is yard sales. In the South, we have a lot of yard sales and we have good yard sales. So um, I take, try to take advantage of that and go and try to get my home decor there and just, you know, 
transform it to fit my home. So I just uh, chalk painted it and I did, I think I did three layers of chalk paint on this. And I kind of went, I didn't really um, go as heavy on the edges. I did not want to sand the edges because I didn't want that shiny metal to shine through. But you could also go in with a glaze and glaze that, you know, raised area and that would be really pretty. Well, another new stencil, y'all, that I got in my Amazon store is this one. And I have been dying to use it so I thought this would be so pretty on this little um, metal tray because I think this would be so pretty on a vanity and I'm going to show y'all some ways of how we can stage this with some more yard sale finds but I did coat this one with some spray um, clear matte uh, rust-oleum spray just because I knew it would have you know bottles and stuff on it and I didn't want it to scratch so I did seal this one really good so now I'm just going to set back let y'all see the things that I've acquired at yard sales and just some ways of things that we can make just to embellish them and decorate them in, in our home. And so I hope y'all enjoy the staging.
Okay, y'all, it's that time when I have to tell y'all goodbye again. But I hope y'all enjoyed seeing the things that I made in today's video and how we gave that old little vintage butter churn a new life. And I hope you caught on and got and enjoyed seeing all the little Avon bottles that I acquired. I got a whole box of those at a yard sale not too long ago for $7. And I hope it carried y'all down memory lane because I know it sure did me. So I want to say another thanks to my, my viewers, my friends that send me these gifts. A lot of these items I used in today's video were gifts. And I really and truly appreciate each and every one of y'all. So I hope y'all have a great weekend. I plan to see y'all again, God willing, in my next video on Wednesday. So much love to y'all. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all for watching. Bye, y'all.